We are farmers. Well, I was in advanced studio when I did this, so the, what that means is usually in advanced studio you develop themes, but they have to almost always, uh, you do get information, yes, you get information for engineers from engineering. You have a studio engineer and his job is to feed you that information. So if you start a full-size side view drawing, for instance, that package drawing, which shows the layout of the car, where the people sit, where the engine is, the wheelbase and all that, comes from engineering and he makes prints for us and puts it up on a full-size board and then we overlay that and put our themes on there. In the case of this car, we wanted to keep the theme as close to that original sketch as we possibly could. But when it went to the production studio to be sent out to be built, we had to, they had to make compromises on it. So it didn't come out quite like we really wanted it to be. And it was an economic situation with the corporation at the time, which was struggling to pay for all these big, massive programs. This series here with the red car down, uh, we did a Grand Prix project in, the se in 73. And what it was was part of the downsizing of the, all the cars after the gas crisis. So I had been in LA and came back, and of course I thought the downsizing was wonderful because out in LA everybody's driving vans and Volkswagens and you know smaller cars just, just for gas mileage and to get around the city and stuff because it was difficult with all the traffic and everything. So we started this uh, downsized Grand Prix and we did a couple of sort of mm, what you would call retro uh, kind of cars. And the first one we did in the studio wasn't really all that well received so we started uh, a friend of mine, Rusnoff, Ilya Rusnoff. I think he's a brilliant designer but anyhow he and I were working together in advanced one under Bill Porter. And so we thought, well, okay, we're going to go to the library and just start looking around for classic cars to see if something kind of takes. And we found one. It was the Bugatti Type 50 around 1934. And it was the upper that got us excited. And up to then, we had been doing cars with these two-tone swing panels like on Duesenbergs and stuff. And, and this car had it too. In fact, I got a teeny scale model of it. You want to see it? <laughs> but this was the car that kind of set that car in, in motion. And Russ started it by using, what we really liked was the upper. It has a fast windshield and this abrupt back end, which gave it a whole different gesture from what had been going on before that. So it's a great car. It's kind of an unusual Bugatti this is the too, Bugatti I think. the 30s one. Yes, this is like a, what is it, maybe it'll even say on here. I think it's a 34. 37, oh, that's different. But anyway, it's a Type 50, I believe is what they call this model. And, um, but it, it had this, you know, the color panel that we've been playing with, they call them the swing panel. And uh, so he started a car with this upper, <clears throat> but with a modern wedge-shaped body to it. And the management reviews were kind of like, you know, and okay, and they'd go away, and then they came back, he did some more work on it, and they came back, and, and it's still not been, I thought, hmm, maybe that, I like the upper, I thought it was fabulous. And I thought, well, maybe it needs a different lower to go with that look of the upper, more romantic and more Pontiac, because this was for a Grand Prix, Pontiac Grand Prix. So I did a real quick sketch, and I was looking at it, and I thought, oh, I don't know, it's Russ's project, and I don't know what to do now. So anyhow, they came in, management came in, and they weren't happy with it, and I showed Porter. I said, well, what do you think of this? And he said, that's it! you know, heart attack time. So that's what that red um, drawing or a red photograph is, is the clay model that came out of that.